Why are we gaining weight? What's going on, Square Nation? Dr. Shelley bringing you wellness wisdom for today. Give you some ideas as far as why we're gaining weight. I could go into the metabolic reasons, but you could probably find them on a different video. Um, whether it's your detox, your gut, your hormones, you know, how you're eating, combining proteins and starches at the same time, stuff like that. There's all kinds of reasons why we could go into, but let's talk about the neuroemotional connections because these are profound and they're helping you understand why you might specifically be gaining weight and why someone you love is not and or uh, is as well. So um, we have work with participants all the time who want to change your body composition, change your body weight. Um, your body stores to toxins in your fat. If your your fat is swelling because you're holding on toxins, that's another reason why you might gain those toxins. So be mindful what you put on your body, as far as your top your products go and stuff like that. But um, gaining weight is oftentimes thought to be like an insulator. Okay, it insulates you from the outside world. It may keep you from having physical contact with someone, uh, metaphorically and or or literally. Um, it could be like an insulation from I feel safer because I have more mass to me. A lot of different things that. Um, it could be like I feel the self-devaluating conflict because I feel part of me is unsightly, so I want to cover it up. So that can happen a lot of times. Um, some people are born and or live in situations where they have this fear of not having enough. It's like a storage survival thing, and they're like, I gotta get every, I mean, I know um, one of our love, beloved participants, Susie, she will literally order two or three meals at a time and then take them all home when she doesn't eat all, all three of them because she has this desperate fear that she's not gonna have enough. Um, and we have all the love and compassion for her because it can be very challenging to, to have that, that psychological effect on your body and feeling those urges even though your, your metabolic needs are being met. So uh, our heart goes out to her in that journey. Um, but it's like a conflict for storage survival, survival storage. It's like I gotta, I gotta pack more on, pack more on because I don't wanna go starving, I don't wanna go um, without eating. Um, some people do it because they feel more able, to, I don't know, I'm just flying. They're able to throw their weight around. Uh, it's a weird concept that just came to me. But it's like they can't impose their authority, so they gain mass in order to feel more powerful in, 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 in imposing their authority. Um, so when we think about, is it our loss of territory that's causing us to gain weight? Like, I feel like my, my space is shrinking, so then in order to gain that back, I have to grow. Okay, that's a different concept to, to consider. Um, because of maybe someone's imposing their disgusting power on you or they're imposing their will on you and you're like, this is, I had enough. You know, maybe I just felt like I'm too light or too thin or too whatever, I don't have the power so I gain that weight and it helps me feel powerful. That could be. Kind of reminds me of villains in, in movies. They gotta be bigger. Oh, for sure, yeah, I mean, exactly. And this is point to, is exactly right. Villains tend to be bigger or make themselves bigger because they are really actually insecure inside. Um, not that you have to gain weight because you're in screen side, but it's like if you don't feel like you can impose your, your will or your territory, it can become an issue for you. Um, sometimes when you have an overprotective mother or over, overbearing mother, it can be like your way of keeping space and pushing back and saying, you know, just leave me alone. I'm, I just want to stay in here and, and uh, you know, and be by myself, if you will. Um, on a rare occasion, some people are just like, you know what? I've done enough. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to gain weight because I'm satisfied with where I'm at in life. You know, they just they just throw like I don't care anymore, and that's fine. I mean, how you want to look is is up to you, and how you want to feel in your body is up to you. You will live longer by having less um, swollen fat tissue in your body, less weight on your body because we store toxins in our fat. So, the leaner you can be, the less you can eat, healthy wise, not anorexia, and the more muscle mass you can have is what's going to keep you the healthiest, the longest. And then that's physically, but then you have to go and do, you know, basically the emotional work, which is what we're talking about here. So take into consideration some of these ideas, see how they overlay on your life. Um, let us know if you have an insight like, oh man, that really triggered this idea for me because I've been wondering what that was about and now I understand that I couldn't impose my authority or, you know, I felt like I needed to, do, I was fearing like not surviving, stuff like that. So please share with your uh, your comments with us and let us share your, share your ideas with us and your so journey. Someone says that they're morally obese and no diet works when they live with three guys who eat junk. Okay, well, step one, remove yourself from the situation. Step two, unless someone is piling the food in your mouth, you can close your mouth. The, the one joint in your mouth, in your body, that um, if they sewed it shut and tied it shut, you would die, would that be your jaw? Okay, so um, there are plenty of people that have injuries to their jaws, stuff like that. If you can't eat a massive amount of food, you, you will have to literally physically lose weight. 
Now that it's nuanced, I get it. It's it's more complex than that. But if you're in an environment where the junk is and it, people are there and you you can't stop yourself from eating it, then you a move, remove yourself from the situation, find a new environment, and b work on the emotional eating habit. And well, maybe we'll do uh, we we'll do food triggers before, like dairy and, and wheat and, we'll and sugar and stuff like that. that. Okay, we'll dive in that next week uh, sometime. But yeah, thanks for the comment. That's that's great. Um, so. Yeah, that would be, those, that's what I would do if I was me. Um, I don't live in your shoes, and I don't know what your life is like, and I don't know what you've dealt with, so it's, I can't see what you're seeing through. You have a different lens than I do. Well, from your perspective or my perspective, I know that if I don't have it in my house, I won't eat it. Without a question. Yep. So that's just one, yep. one piece of Remove it from the situation. Yeah. Most people will not get in their car and drive somewhere to get one thing when they have a craving for it. So um, do your best to remove yourself from that situation and, and prevent yourself. Prevention is a cure. I mean, if you don't have crap laying around and it's not – uh, and you and you portion out your food and you don't eat excessively past your physiological need, you, you're going to be much less able, much more able to maintain the body weight you desire. Okay, so comment below, please share with your friends and family if you feel like this is helpful for them to understand what journey they're going through. I know it's a touchy subject. Um, there's just as much, uh, there might be as equal amount of, and I, I know people are great are argue with this, but it's not equal. That's not accurate. Society has this image of like. The, the model or the, the super skinny person, I don't think that's healthy at all. Um, but there, there's plenty of fat shaming as there is skinny shaming. Um, I'd say the society pushes people that have weight challenges much harder and they're much less compassionate toward them. Although I would love to see the, the different things that are going on at like Target and, and Victoria's Secret where they have the models that are actually indicative of what we are as human beings. Um, not everybody's a size zero, like that's ridiculous. But what matters is how you want to feel and how you want to feel best in your body and what feels good for you. Okay, that's all that matters. Like if you're 300 pounds and you feel great, who gives a crap? <laughs> um, anyway. Jo Jody says she eats emotionally but can't remove herself from the house with spouses and kids. Okay, who does the shopping? Uh, if Josie, you said? Jody. Jody, pardon me, Jody. If you're doing the shopping, then they are at the mercy of whatever you buy. <laughs> I will say that. Uh, we work with plenty of parents, uh, mothers specifically, cause, who do most of the shopping, most of the buying. Um, I get it. They're going to get a lot of belly aching about it, but guess what? They're not about to jump in their car and go out there. And, and if you make something and they don't like it, like, I'm not a short order chef. Suck it up, buttercup. Eat it or no eat it. If you want something else, go make it yourself. If your husband is giving you flack, you make him drive out to the store and get it himself. Mm -hmm. It is not your responsibility. Not your monkey, not your circus. Sarah asks, can you define more than your physiological need, specifically in regards to pasta, asking for a friend? No. <laughs> oh, Sarah. Love you for that. Um, you know, generally speaking, there are guides on, if you did like a Google image search or a DuckDuckGo image search, it'll show you the portion sizes, like, you know, whatever fits in your palm, okay? The, the, sh the shapes and sizes of our plates and bowls have grown like 150% or more since the 1950s. They're just massive. So psychologically, we see this tiny, this giant plate and we see these small portions and we're like, huh, that's interesting. I better fill that up more because I psychologically think my plate is empty when really you need half of that. If you're eating more than like what fills your hand, you're doing it for more than the need from your body, okay? And like people that run more than a 5K, like more than three miles, they're doing it for something more than exercise because that's really all you need to, to stimulate your body. That give you a, a frame of reference, but yeah, I mean literally, if I have more pasta that can fit in this eight ounce cup, and that's probably a big portion, that's that would be excessive for physiological need. So, wanting to struggle, wanting to not struggle, um, wanting to emotionally withdraw or feeling emotionally withdrawn from someone or having someone emotionally withdraw from you, that's about carbs, Sarah. So you probably already heard that a hundred times by now, but that's where I would go with that. Okay, cool. All right, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow for the wellness wisdom, guys. Have a great night.